Yo, yo, yo. I can't walk. <laughs> I don't have some cool intro, so let's just get to the start of the show. I occasionally tune into a program on YouTube called the Joe Budden Podcast starring Joe Budden and his two buddies Rory and Wall. Recently there's been some drama between them over contracts, money, and other problems that affected the show's chemistry before Rory and Maul went on hiatus for about a month. They both returned to the podcast to clear the air of their grievances, but a lot of what was said seemed vague and subliminal to me, which I found BORING. Then on the next episode, Joe Budden was on by himself going on a rant where he told Told Rory he was in breach of his contract, so yes! and basically told Maul. Yeah, you either gonna get down or you gonna fucking lay down. A lot of people who follow the podcast have given their opinions on what happened, and I felt like doing the same, but I needed to gather as much information as possible so this video can make sense. Saturday, May 15th, a YouTuber called Soul Lord uploaded the stream of Rory and Maul's hour-long response to Joe Budden. In the stream, I learned Rory joined the podcast on its seventh episode, and Maul joined on its 77th episode to form the tripod of friends talking shit online that I've enjoyed listening to over the past seven years. Thank you for being a friend. Because Rory and Maul have been involved for so long, they were partners with Joe and not employees like he led the public to believe. The majority of the video is Rory and Maul explaining numerous encounters with Joe where he spazzed on them for asking accounting questions as to exactly how much they were supposed to get paid for the podcast. And like I said, I, I'm mad that we even got to sit here and do this because... I don't even like addressing dumb shit and, and, and stupid shit, but I understand we owe it to the supporters and the listeners and the followers to just tell the truth. I'm not going to say outside. This is the truth. This is what it is. This is what the issue is and was is the fact that we kept asking for accounting. We're supposed to get accounting because I see people saying, oh, why are y'all asking for the books if y'all y'all employees, employees can't? No, no, no. We have uh, a profit partners. Profit partners are allowed for any accounting. We and get body any accounting. And an Excel spreadsheet is not fucking accounting. That's not accounting. And if you okay, know anything about that, accounting, you, you would never send somebody an Excel spreadsheet and say, this is accounting. It's disrespectful. Other than a couple of jokes Maul made about Joe's ego and his not so stellar music career, the entire video is the two of them giving instances supporting the claim that they were kept in the dark about where their money was going. I'm not gonna dwell on the Rory and Maul stream because I find that BORING and I believe there's a bigger picture to the story. Take a look at Joe Budden's track record. A long time ago. Joe Budden broke onto the hip hop scene with the hit single Pump It Up. He's never Topped the success of Pump It Up as a solo artist, so he joined Royce the 5'9, Crooked Eye, and Joel Ortiz to form the rap group Slaughterhouse. If Slaughterhouse were the Beatles, Royce is John Lennon, Crooked Eye is Paul McCartney, Joel Ortiz is George Harrison, and Joe Budden would be Ringo Starr. I know this is an old reference, but trust me when I tell you that even when the Beatles were the hottest rock band in the world, no one wanted to be Ringo Starr. Right. This is a bigger waste of time than Ringo's songwriting. Hey guys, I wrote a song. Oh, that's great. Oh, good, Ringo. Fantastic. You know what? I'm gonna put it right here. Right on the refrigerator. That way we'll get to see it every day. All right. Slaughterhouse gets signed by Eminem, but he doesn't know what to do with them, so Joe Budden starts a YouTube channel to showcase his music as a solo artist. Joe's YouTube channel isn't popping like he wants it to, so he starts his own podcast, which he does by himself at first. Joe's podcast isn't popping like he wants it to, so he recruits Rory and Maul to make it better, and that plan actually works. <laughs> What's it say? Well, it says, I love it when a plan comes together. It works so well that Complex hires him to co-host their show Everyday Struggle with DJ Academics and moderator Nadeska Alexis. On Everyday Struggle, Joe Budden represented the old school while DJ Academics repped the new school on daily debates of current hip-hop topics. Joe used that platform to make a name for himself by making viral moments on the show like spazzing on Lil Yachty for not knowing the specifics of his contract deal. Yeah, you don't you sound like you very aware but what with what's it? going on and you wanted the hottest niggas 
on earth. Well, what do you want me to say? You want me to say? I want uh, you to uh, be uh, aware uh. of your business. I want you to know whether you're in a 360 or not. I want you to appreciate the culture that changed your life uh. and took you from college dorm rooms eating fucking oodles and noodles. I want you, who's well spoken and articulates himself well. My nigga. Chill. Yeah, hold on. Yo, I'm yeah. And walking off during an interview with the Migos on the red carpet of an award show. All right, we gotta wrap this up though. Okay. Oh, my bad. My bad. Have you tried to jump? I can wrap it up then. Over there too. Close it. Close it. Hey, listen, man. I wish I could talk to the Migos longer, man. It's one of my favorite groups. I've been covering for so long. I'm glad they succeeded, man. Hey, man. You guys are nominated tonight. Have a good show. Joe leaves everyday struggle and hooks up with P. Diddy's Revolt TV to start a talk show called State of the Culture and his interview show Pull Up, all while still gaining fans for his podcast with all this newfound exposure. Joe proves he still wants all the smoke when he goes viral again for having the audacity for telling the world that he's a better rapper than Eminem in 2018. Are you crazy? That shit is so disrespectful! I don't remember if Joe had any more noteworthy moments after that. Marijuana affects the memory. But I do know that Joe displayed consistency in his ability to entertain the hip-hop masses for the past three years with all of his collective exploits. Make no mistake about it, Joe Budden's the star of the podcast. That's why his name's on the damn title of it. I see Joe Budden as Adam Sandler while Rory and Maul are Rob Schneider and David Spade. David, thanks for taking time away from waiting for Sandler to write Grown Ups 3 to be here. Rob Schneider and David Spade are funny supporting actors that Adam Sandler feeds off of to make his movies more watchable. Rory and Maul serve the same purpose for Joe Budden. The difference between Rory and Maul and Schneider and Spade is the latter tandem have actually done projects without Adam Sandler and them to hold their hands on screen. In the seven years they've been associated with the podcast, Rory and Maul have done absolutely nothing on their own on screen without Joe Budden except online interviews. I I think Joe Budden's trying to become the Joe Rogan of hip-hop and he feels he can't accomplish that with Rory and Maul being perceived as his equals on the podcast. At the same time, Rory and Maul lack the star power to just leave the show because they always present themselves as just regular dudes who happen to be friends with Joe's crazy ass. I believe firing Rory publicly creates a storyline and narrative that'll make the audience want to watch a podcast with Rory and Maul in the beginning because without it, I think their show would be terrible. Throughout this entire ordeal, DJ Academics has been talking shit about them which is something else they can talk about to build their new show on. Within a year, if Rory and Maul's podcast is successful, expect to see Joe Budden make appearances on it and vice versa the same way Joe Rogan does with his friends. Yeah. I think the plan's working because Joe Budden looked pleased with the results so far in his IG live feed after Rory and Maul's televised response to him. Some people can't see it because he still has to play the villain in this situation which is why I think he was wearing those sunglasses that make him look like Yoko Ono. <laughs> I feel like if this beef was real, both sides would be roasting the dog shit out of each other publicly and that hasn't been the case. Both sides stated that no one's suing anybody so at this point it's just Joe talking to patrons about money I didn't donate to the podcast. I don't work for Capital One so I don't care about what's in your wallet. So quite frankly, I don't give a fuck about errors made by the accountant for Joe Budden's podcast. I just think after seven years of doing the podcast together, the show has gone on as far as it could and Joe feels that now's the time for everyone to Finally! leave the nest to spread their wings individually and learn to fly on their own. I'll still try to catch episodes of both podcasts when I can and I wish all parties involved continued success in their future endeavors. You can do it! You can do it all night long! And that's all I have to say about that. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, please subscribe, and tell me what you think in the comment section below. Peace. I'm Audi 5000. Those who wish to follow me, I welcome with my hand.
And those are my thoughts for this video. But then again, what do I know? I'm just an old crippled bastard. I ain't too proud to beg for your money, so like, share, and subscribe.